हेलो फ्रेंड वेलकम टू मरीन इंजीनियरिंग हब दिस इज रवि गुप्ता टुडे यू आर टॉक अबाउट हाउ द ट्यूब्स आर अटैच इन द बॉयलर विल सी द ट्यूब अटैचमेंट बाय एक्सपैंडिंग एंड बिल्ड ऑन वेल्डिंग एंड आफ्टर दैट वी आर गोइंग टू सी हाउ द वाटर वॉल ट्यूब्स आर मेड एंड व्हाट आर डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ वाटर वॉल ट्यूब एंड हाउ दे आर कनेक्टेड ओके सो बेसिकली दिस वीडियो इज अबाउट द ट्यूब अटैचमेंट एंड द वाटर वॉल ट्यूब this is the part 3 of the water tube boiler and if you want to know what are the component of water tube boiler and why the water tube boiler comes into the play means how the water tube boiler is designed why it is designed then please go to my playlist and you from there you can watch the boiler series where you will learn a lot so let's begin the video how the tubes are attached in boiler boiler tubes are attached by only two method expanding and welding in expanding we are first expand it and then we bell mouth it so what we will need do in some case both method are incorporated means like in a state tube boiler in, in state tube which is used in smoke tube boiler the both method of bell mouthing or expanding and as well as welding are carried out most of the tube in the boiler are such as generating tube screen tube water wall tube etc are expanded and then bell mouthed why they are done these tube which are inserted must have a contact of at least 6 mm through the plate means the contact through the plate should be at least of 6 mm so that it have a good grip now how the bell mouthing of the tube is carried out bell mouth is done to prevent the pulling out period of service means what basically i mean to say bell mouthing is done this is bell mouthing bell mounting is done so that the tube doesn't get pull out while it is in service as per standard bell mounting setting 1 mm of bell mouth is required for every 25 mm of outside diameter plus 1.5 means if the diameter is 25 25 mm then the bell mounting will be done 1 plus 1.5 dia of the dia okay this will be the amount of bell mounting this is a tube plate and this is a tube okay tube attachment to a tube plate if the tube is attached to a perpendicular to a surface then the length of a parallel sitting must be at least 10 mm it means that this is a tube plate if the tube is sitting parallel to the perpendicular to a surface means this is perpendicular to a surface in that case the tube attachment should be at least of 10 mm and if the entrance is not perpendicular in that case tube attachment should be at least 30 mm so these are the thing we need to keep in mind while expanding the tube as you can see in this diagram these are the tools which are used for bell mouthing first this mandrel is inserted to the end of the tube and after that it is open up and at is open up this will cause the expansion or bell mouthing of the tube to prevent it coming out while during it remaining in service now the large diameter tube instead of bell mouthing it is also provided with a special seating structure large diameter tube such as down comer are fitted in a groove seat tube plate this is a groove seat tube plate the two material flow into the groove during the expansion process so helping to form a tight seal so basically what happened this grooving is provided so that to provide additional grip apart from the requirement that the if the apart from the requirement i have told you earlier that if the tube is entering perpendicular to the tube plate then the attachment should have a 10 mm attachment or if not perpendicular then 13 mm apart from that to provide additional grip and additional support for a large diameter tube to prevent it from coming out this groove like structure is provided so that for a down comer okay and after that it is bell mouthed okay now tube which are subjected to temperature above 450 degree are attached by welding method it means the superheated tube mainly are attached by welding method so a question may ask that which type of tube are mainly attached by welding method the tube which are subjected to high temperature are mainly attached by welding method 
but in some case some of the superheated tube which are subjected to a temperature less than 450 degrees celsius so if the temperature of superheated tube which is subjected is less than 450 degrees celsius then normal expanding and melting will be done but if it is above then welding will be done in welding method of attachment a stub pipe is fitted in between the header and a tube stub pipe attachment vary with the type of welding basically what is a stub as you can see this is the stub tube okay this is the stub tube which is fitted in between the header and the tube okay this stub pipe will vary depending upon the type of welding basically gas weld stub pipe required backing ring to prevent weld material breaking through the tube bore so if the gas welding is carried out in that case the stub pipe will require backing ring to prevent the weld material breaking through the tube bore but in case of electric welding method backing ring are not necessary due to the specially shaped tube end so as you can see in this diagram this is the stub pipe which is been done by gas welding method and this is a stub pipe which is done by the electric welding method so in gas welding method basically what happened that backing the ring is provided to prevent it from prevent the weld material to get break but in electric welding no backing ring is required because of the especially shaped tube like this especially shaped tube it is no more required to prevent direct tensile coming on the tube it is required that tube must bend at 90 degree okay to prevent that the direct tensile coming on the tube the tube are bent 90 degree okay 90 degree to with compared to the stress now as you can see here this is a square header and this is a tube stop okay and this is a round header this is a tube stop so welding is basically done carry out here and here so as you can see this is the header and this is a tube stop and above that the tube are provided okay so this is how the large diameter tubes are attached by with the help of a tube stop to a header now what is a water wall tube? The main function of a water wall tube is to contain the heat, mainly the radiant heat of the furnace and reduce the amount of refractive material uses. So for that reason, the water wall tube is provided in a boiler. But as a water wall tube is large in diameter, tube containing water, so it also contributes to the evaporation rate by receiving radiant heat. This radiant heat provides bulk of steam generation. So basically what happened, the water wall tube is provided all around the the water wall tube is provided all around the boiler cell plating and that water wall head water wall tube not only conserve the heat means not only conserve the heat but it also prevent the heat to go out to the cell plating and the cell plating is not subjected to direct heat and it also reduces the amount of refractive material and also help for the bulk steam generation as it contain water therefore it will help water to evaporate and steam to generate now let's see water wall tube design is critical because it need to be designed in such a way that the radiant heat is not allowed to pass outside as it will overheat the boiler casing very important means the tube should be designed in such a way that the radiant heat doesn't find its way to the boiler cell plating. If it finds its way to the boiler outer, outward casing, in that case, that part will get heat, heated up and the, and the direct contact of the human skin or if come in contact, then there may be a burning may occur. So, the water wall tube should be such that it prevents the any radiant heat to go outside or leak outside. For that reason, different type of tubes are designed, water wall tubes are designed so that to restrict that and depending upon the types and pressure this design are used to ensure the conservation of radiant heat within the boiler four design is preferred by the manufacturer what are that first is the partial stubbed water wall second is a tangential water wall third is a diaphragm water wall which can be categorized in two type membrane and mono wall so we will see all the three types let's see partial stubbed Stirred water wall. The partially stirred water wall has a relatively wide pitch, so does not unduly weaken the tube plate or header 
but to seal the gaps between the tubes or refractory material must be used this being keyed in place by the steel stud resistance welded to the water wall tube so let's see what i am talking about basically as you can see this is the tube and the studs are provided and in this studs both thing means this stud is acting as a backup strength for the refractory to hold on and the two pipe tubes are held against each other by a refractory wall in between and this refractory wall to provide strength to the refractory wall this stops act as a backing ring okay and by this a continuous wall is provided which not only help in the steam generation but also acting as a wall to prevent the direct radiant heat to come to the boiler casing now the second one is a tangential water wall tube let's see what i have written here in case of a tangential type water wall a much smaller pitch is used the offset tube allow the use of a stagger hole to prevent undue weakening of the tube plate and header however some radiant heat can still penetrate penetrate the water and a layer of suitable refractory material must be placed behind the water wall to protect the boiler casing so what happened mainly as you can see this is the header and this is the tubes to prevent the tubes hole to be placed once one tube if hole are done here again if the hole are done here in the same line in that case what will happen the material strength will be loose in that structure to prevent the material strength to lose in that continuous plane the tangential wall tubes basically what it do is if one hole is drilled here so one hole is drilled here one hole is drilled here then one hole is drilled here by using the zigzag method what it is doing it is ultimately distributing the stress all over the header and the hole are drilled in the two different planes so that it doesn't weaken the overall head in a one plane apart from the, that the design is tangential so that the some of the radiant heat may escape from this space to prevent a to prevent escaping a refractory material is used behind the tangential wall to prevent the read heat to find its way to the boiler outer casing okay now as you can see this is a stub water wall tube okay this these are the tubes which are been in between the refractory material are provided and after that the this is a refractory material okay this is a refractory material this is a block insulation of refractory and this is a plastic insulation and then is a ceiling layer means how different layer of insulation are provided be before boiler casing so what happened first we provide the water wall tube and refractory after that we provide the block insulation after that we plastic insulation and then the ceiling layer to prevent the direct heat coming to the boiler outer casing now this is the tangential wall tube which is placed little bit in a misalignment so that to reduce the structural strength of one particular plane okay in same way as you can see the mainly after the tube you have refractory provided and then again a plastic insulation and then the shell case steel casing okay now see the diaphragm wall tube diaphragm type water wall are constructed by welding longitudinal fins between adjacent plane as in the membrane wall or alternatively welding fins tube together along the line of a contact as in the mono wall basically they are categorized in two type membrane type and mono wall type in membrane type what happened this is a tube and along the both side of the tube the welded steel fins are welded with the with the tube okay means here the welding will be done here the welding will be carried out here the welding will be carried out this is called membrane wall tube means the tubes are separate and these fins are separate but the, these fins are welded on to the membrane wall tube and then it form a continuous wall like structure and in mono wall what happen the whole tubes are provided with a fin tube means the whole tube consists of a fin and the two tubes with a fin structure are joined in between here once and here one with a locking arrangement you, you can see with the locking arrangement is provided the two will get locked and then a welding will carry out this is called mono wall construction of a diaphragm type wall tube basically in diaphragm type wall tube no refractory material are used okay so 
In both case, similar gas tight panel are formed which can be used to surround the furnace. The welded fins being omitted in a way any required gas passes as no radiant heat can penetrate this wall. No refractive material need to be fitted behind them and single boiler casing can be used. So very important thing is that that the membrane wall tube or a mono wall tube design has an advantage that it doesn't require any refractive to be fitted after it. As in the case of tangential and the stub pipe, a refractory case lining is need to be provided after the wall. But here, a refract no refractory lining is provided. And it will contain the radiant heat fully and will prevent the heat to be radiated outward. So, just after the mono wall or membrane wall, a boiler steel casing will be can be provided with insulation. So, now let's see the disadvantage. A disadvantage of the diaphragm wall is that the tube, if the tube failure occur are difficult to repair, means if the tube failure occur, it is very difficult to repair. Why? Simple plugging of the failed tube are no longer being suitable as single as a single casing have no refractive would rapidly overheat instead of immediate well repair of the damaged tube must be performed before the boiler can be returned to service. So one problem is that suppose a fin a part of the tube get damaged a cut is made like this so if a cut is made like this the boiler cannot be put back in service and boil repair it need to be carried out immediate before returning the boiler into service because as it is continuous there will be huge leakage and boiler can be brought while the leakage is there into operation Another problem arises in the event of an explosion within the furnace which would act directly upon the gas light panel distorting them and in serious case pulling out the tube from the attachment. If the tubes are pulled out of the attachment, the complete damage will be there and the whole membrane wall tube need to be changed. So if the explosion occurs inside the boiler, in that case whole membrane wall tube will get damaged and the whole huge repair cost will be implemented. So, this membrane water tube and mono water tube have both advantage and disadvantage. It reduces the amount of refractory use, but it also costly in implementation. And secondly, if any damage occur, it need to be repaired first. After that, the boiler can put new service. So, second, if an explosion occur. It may cause such damage that the whole membrane wall need to be replaced and will implement high cost. So for that reason, as you can see here, this is a membrane wall tube and this is the insulation and just a metal casing means because of the advantage this thing are provided. But if this water wall tube get damaged from this tube attachment, we need to repair that part of the tube completely before bringing back to the service. So I hope you understand that why what are water wall tube, why different type of water wall tube, how they attach and how the tubes are attached in the water tube boiler. If you have any doubt, please do comment below. I will reply and please do subscribe and share my video and please like it. I hope you like the video. Please share with your friend. Thank you friend. Have a good day.